<laughs> now we got in. All right. Yay. <laughs> somebody got the somebody got the message. <laughs> All right. Hi, Deb. Hello. Sorry, we were having technical difficulty. No problem. Thanks. Um All right. Wonderful. All right, good. We are rocking and rolling. Perfect. That was good timing. <laughs> Third time was a charm. All right, everyone. Hello, hello. Look at all these. Shiny, happy faces. So many familiar faces coming back. I love it. And new faces. I'm Nancy. I'm the yoga instructor here. I teach every Monday morning at nine. I also teach at a studio in town called Love Yoga. And uh, if anybody's interested in knowing more about those classes, you can see me after. But we do a nice mix here of just a gentle a combination of basics and gentle flow. So take it at your own pace. I do a lot of verbal cues and a lot of folks in the room have been taking the class for a while. So if you're not sure what to do, just eyeball them. And uh, it's all about having fun though. And I always say most importantly is tune into your breath. Yoga is not yoga without the breath, kind of like in scuba diving. <laughs> always breathe. So let's start in a comfortable seat and finding your seat. Um, if you're planning to come to class a lot this season, I highly recommend a yoga blanket and they're easy to find either online or TJ Maxx usually has a good supply of them and they're beneficial. A block is beneficial too, to put under your seat. And I'll show you the idea being that you wanna elevate your hips. Your sit bones rest on the block, if the block is all you have, so that you can find straight alignment with your spine and that your knees can then drop down toward the mat. So you're kind of sitting on the edge of the block and your sit bones are touching the corners. You feel that? So you're not fully sitting on back on it, you're sitting forward on it so that you get a little bit of the pelvic tilt. Your pelvis is moving toward the floor. Nice. And focus on and lengthening through your spine. So in lengthening our spine, we give it space to breathe. So sit up nice and tall and everyone close your eyes and take a deep breath. Inhale through both nostrils. Sigh it out through the mouth. <sighs> Just let it go. Now begin to breathe in and out through your nostrils. And a normal breath, don't try and change it at all, manipulate it at all, just be aware of it. So a simple breath awareness. And as you tune into your breath, you begin to settle the chatter going on in the mind. And tuning into being here versus anywhere else versus thinking about what you're gonna do after you leave here or thinking about what was going on before you came into this space and just tuning into this present moment. So with this being the month of November, often think about gratitude and giving. So let's everyone bring your hands together by your heart. So gently touching the tips of your thumbs against the breastbone and take a moment to set an intention for your practice this morning. Something that maybe is like an offering an offering of gratitude or giving. Maybe you can take this month to 
give to yourself or to others. So dedicate your practice in such a way that fills that gratitude or giving. And then also dedicate your practice. So first person that comes to your mind. And now the second person. And now widen that circle to include all beings everywhere. And we typically open our practice with the sound of OM, which is a universal sound. It's a vibratory sound. So if, you're, if you've never done it, you can listen if you are comfortable joining in. It's actually pronounced ah, ooh, um, and then putting the lips together for that final sound. So first take a deeper inhale and exhale it out through your nose just to clear out that breath and push it all the way out. And then we'll inhale together. Oh. sensations or effects from that own feeling the energies of others here in the space and at home joining us. And then let your hands float down to your knees, flicker the eyes open, and we're going to start with a pranayama technique, a breathing technique called alternate nostril breathing. Some of you have done it with me before. Turn your left palm to face up tip of the index finger lightly touches against the thumb and then extend your third, fourth, fifth fingers. And then with your right, take your second finger and third, pressing it lightly against that space in between the eyebrows, your third eye. And then you're gonna use your ring finger and your thumb to press one nostril closed on my cue. So we begin with the left, take a full inhale, and exhale it out. And now press your thumb against your right nostril and inhale through the left. And now close the left nostril and exhale through the right. Everybody got that? Yeah? So on my cue, we're gonna inhale, we'll do it as a cycle. We're gonna be inhaling for four and then holding the breath at the top for four and then exhaling for four. So again, take a clearing breath, inhale and exhale fully. And now close the right nostril, inhale through the left, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four, close the left, open the right, exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, right, two, three, four, close the right and hold, two, three, four, exhale left, two, three, four, inhale left, two, three, four, close the left, hold, two, three, four, open the right, exhale, two, three, four, Inhale, right, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, left, two, three, four. Inhale, left, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, right, two, three, four, inhale, right, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, left, two, three, four, last round, inhale, left, two, three, four, hold, two, three,
three, four, exhale, right, two, three, four. Inhale, right, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Exhale, left, two, three, four. And release that right hand. Take a deep inhale through both nostrils and exhale it out. And just sit for a moment and let those sensations feel whatever it is that you're feeling. So when we do pranayama, when we do breathing techniques, it helps to settle our mind even more. It helps to move the energy through our body and to prepare us for the practice. It helps us tune into the breath. So now moving into what we call the ujjayi breath, inhale through your nose. As you exhale through your nose, place a constriction in the back of your throat. If you're not sure what that feels like, you can say ha on your exhale and then close your lips and say ha on your exhale and feel that constriction. So that's the ujjayi breath and that's the type of breath you want to try and maintain through your practice. Take another inhale. And on your exhale, flicker the eyes open and come to child's pose. So begin to make your way, take the block away or blanket and then spread your knees as wide as your mat. Bring your toes to touch in the back and then begin to move your seat back towards your heels. Let the arms extend out in front, but relax them and lower the forehead to the mat and breathe here. So five breaths. Feeling the breath move into the belly. Feeling the breath maybe move toward the back. And start to check in with your body, seeing where the areas of tension might be. One more full breath, inhale and exhale it out and then begin to move up to tabletop, hands and knees. So finding our alignment in hands and knees, our knees are in line with our hips, tops of the feet are on the mat and then our shoulders stack with our elbows and our wrists, spread the fingers. Draw your belly button in, so you're engaging the abdominal muscles. And keeping that engagement, lift your crown and lift your tailbone. The belly drops, but it doesn't sag because you have that engagement. And then exhale, round the spine, tuck your chin to your chest, and tuck your tailbone. And then inhale, opposite direction, tilt the tailbone up, lift the crown of the head, open across the heart. And exhale, rounding the spine, tucking chin to chest, tucking the tailbone. Inhale, we call this cow pose. And exhale, we call this cat pose. One more round, moving with your breath. We open our heart on an inhale. And then on the exhale, see if you can find a little bit more space. And then find neutral spine. So when we say neutral spine, pretend I have a tray and I'm gonna place it on your back. So you wanna take arch out and you want to not have it be rounded. And now extend the right leg straight back so you're on your toes. 
and drop that right heel down so you feel the stretch in the back of the right calf. And then inhale, rock forward. And exhale, rock back, pressing that heel down. So do that a few times to warm up that right calf. And then the next time you rock forward, lift it up. Make sure you're stacking shoulders, elbows, and wrists again. And as you lift that right leg up, pay attention to your hips. You want to have your hips level. Beautiful. And now pretend you're pressing a wall with that back foot. So press through the heel. So your foot is flexed. Yeah, nice Robin. Press through the heel to feel that lengthening. Engage the belly on an inhale, lift the left arm. Lift it up by the ear, turn the palm to face in. That helps the shoulder externally rotate. And if that's too much, you can lower the arm and just have the leg <laughs> risen, <laughs> rise. <laughs> and breathe here. Spinal balance. So this is balancing our sides, our left side and our right side. Reach a little bit more to the left fingertips. Press to the heel of the right foot. And then lower down, bring that knee in. And just take one breath, pushing back, but having the arms extended. Keep the head between the arms. And then inhale back to tabletop and extend the left leg. Come up on the toes and move with your breath, pressing the heel down and then inhale, rock forward. Exhale, press that left heel down. Inhale, rocking forward. Exhale, press it down. And then inhale, lifting it up, spinal balance. So take a few breaths here before you move the arm. Find that extension in the left leg, flexing the foot, toes are turned toward the mat. Press through the heel, inhale, the right arm up by the ear, palm turns in. Keep that engagement in the belly. By keeping the engagement in the belly, it'll help with your balance. Breathing in and breathing out. Beautiful. One more full breath. Inhale and exhale, lower down. And then everyone grab their block, maybe two blocks. We're going to sit back on the on our seat. So bring the block in between your ankles. If you can sit comfortably with one block, having your knees toward each other. If not, take a second block and place it under. And then let's just work out our wrists a little bit. I'm going to turn and face everyone. So bring your backs of your hands together to have your wrists touch and rotate so you're offering <laughs> and come back toward you and go the other way and just moving like that a few times working out our wrists a couple more times so paul bring their backs of the hands together yeah and then roll them out yep and then come back toward you very nice good job and just shake that out and then bring the arms up right hand right hand wraps around the left wrist and we're going to side bend to the right as you do work that left arm by your ear and lengthen Feel that opening on the left side. See if you can bring your knees a little bit together. If your knees are really splayed out, see if you can bring them together. And then come through center, grab your, help me out. <laughs> left right. hand around the right, thank you. <laughs> and then side bend over to the left. 
and breathe. So maybe the tightness is in the shoulder. Maybe you're feeling it down the side body. So wherever you're feeling the tightness, breathe into that. And then release. And bring the arms down, interlace the fingers behind your back and bring your knuckles to your sacrum. So the elbows are bent and moving toward each other. Your shoulder blades are moving toward each other and down the back. Lift your chest, tuck your chin toward your chest. Breathe in and breathe out. Opening up our heart space, opening the shoulders and release, shake it out. And then just rock forward, move the blocks out of the way, coming back to tabletop. So come back to hands and knees, extend the right leg back coming up on your toes, extend the left leg back coming up on your toes, plank pose. So your hips are low, engage the core. Beautiful, long line of energy, feel it from the crown of your head, moving down your spine, down the legs out through the heels. And now come on to the tops of your feet, lower down to your knees, lower the thighs, feel the belly, come on to the mat, lower all the way down, forehead touches the mat, your hands are in the position now for cobra, but pull the elbows toward each other, draw the shoulder blades toward each other down the back. Press into the tops of your feet so your knees lift up off the mat and on an inhale, lift the upper body. Keep your gaze looking at the mat so that you're not cranking on your neck. And then lower down. Inhale, lift back up. It's a rolling cobra here. And exhale, lower down. Inhale, lifting up, and exhale, lower down. This one we're gonna hold. Inhale, lift up, and hold. Keep breathing, lift your hands off the mat. Keep the elbows tucking in. Keep pressing into the tops of your feet. One more full inhale and exhale, lower down. Tuck your toes under, push your seat all the way back to your heels so your arms are fully extended and lift your hips up for downward dog. So finding downward dog, the distance between your hands and your feet are such where you can rock forward to plank and not have to adjust. Beautiful, everyone. So take those movements, if you'd like, rocking forward a plank, and then exhale back to downward dog. You can also pedal out your dog. You can drop one heel and bend the knee of the other leg. Do that a few times. So take these next couple of breaths to make any organic movements that feel good. <laughs> you know, it's getting warm. <laughs> Amazing when we start building that heat. We don't need any 100 degree room. <laughs> and then come to downward dog, come to stillness. Take three full breaths here where you can now focus on drawing the navel in. Maybe the hips lift a little bit more. The head is in between the arms and the neck is relaxed. See if the heels can move toward the mat just a little bit more. And now lift the head up so your gaze is between your hands and begin to walk one footprint at a time to the top of your mat. Inhale, lifting up halfway so you're finding a flat back just like in tabletop. Draw your navel in. Inhale, lift the arms up 
So their shoulder height, making a T. And now press into your feet, lift all the way to standing, take the arms overhead, palms to touch, draw them down to your heart center. And find Tadasana Mountain Pose. Feet are about hip distance apart. Hands are facing the mirrors so that your shoulders are rotating back, chest is open. Rock a little forward onto the balls of your feet and then rock back onto your heels, lifting your, feet, your balls of your feet. Rock forward and back a few times. We have two points in our, the balls of our feet, two points in our heels. When we ground down in mountain pose, we're pressing into all four points. So now find stillness and root down. So in our standing poses, we want to make that connection with the earth as if we're rooting down. Close your eyes here for a moment and take a full inhale through your nose and exhale it out through your nose. Coming back to that ujjayi breath, that constriction in the back of your throat. One more full inhale and exhale. And then inhale, sweep the arms overhead. On your exhale, take it slow, begin to hinge. Feel like you're leading with your heart. Tilt your tailbone up a little bit so that you're coming into your forward fold with lengthen, lengthening of the spine. So our forward fold, we're bringing our low belly toward the tops of our thighs. You can use a block at the highest, middle, lowest, to place your hands on. You don't have to force any pose. So if the ground is not naturally, if you're not reaching it naturally, have the props help you. So finding your breath here in Uttanasana forward fold, you can also put a little bend in your knees if you're feeling a lot of tension in the low back. So we want our head to hang heavy. We want to be able to release the tension in the neck. We're breathing into our hamstrings, finding those openings and releases. And now bend your knees a lot and roll up to standing one vertebrae at a time. Inhale, sweep the arms overhead. Exhale, tilt the tailbone up, lead with the heart, come into your forward fold. Bend the knees a lot and roll up to standing. Sweeping the arms overhead. Exhale, hinging at the hips, coming into forward fold. Bending the knees a lot, roll up to standing. Sweep the arms overhead, palms touch. And exhale, forward fold. Reach for your blocks. Place the blocks on either side of your feet. And hands on the block, bend your knees, step the right leg as far back as you can for low lunge. So in low lunge, our hips are low. We're making a 90 degree angle with the left knee right now. Left knee and ankle are making a straight line. The blocks are helping to support us so we can keep the chest open and not collapse. Try not to round the back, but open. Press through the right heel so you feel that full extension in the right leg. Take a full inhale and on your exhale, lower that right knee down. Uncurl the toes and then come to hands on hips. So starting here where you're stacking your shoulders in line with your hips. Bring hands to heart center. So you can stay here. This is where you feel balanced or if you want to add to it, take the arms overhead, separate the arms. Uh, Johnny Asana, maybe the gaze can look up a little bit. We're coming into a new lunar cycle. And with that comes transition, a chance to start something new but we want to do it with balance. So finding balance here in Anjani Asana. Inhale, 
Exhale, hands back to heart center, twist to your left, and then hook that right elbow toward the left knee. So keeping your balance, draw your hips to your midline. Press palm into palm and look at your left elbow. By pressing palm into palm, it helps open that left side of your chest. One more full breath, inhale, exhale to center, bring the arms up and then lower them, place them on the block, tuck your right toes under, lift to low lunge, and then bring the left leg back in downward dog with the blocks. You might be able to drop your heels down to the mat. You might feel a different sensation in your arms and your spine. And now look between your blocks and either walk your feet up or if you want to try jumping, bend your knees a lot and pop your feet forward. <laughs> and then inhale, lifting halfway. Exhale, plant your hands again, bend your knees, take the left leg all the way back, low lunge on the other side. So make the little adjustments, right knee, 90 degree angle. Left heel lifted and pressing back. So you get that full extension in the left leg. Open across the heart. And now lower the left knee, uncurl the toes, bringing hands to hips to start, stacking shoulders with hips. So finding balance here means drawing your hips toward the midline. And then maybe hands can come to heart center and then overhead. So offering different modifications so that you know that you have choices. Maybe the gaze can look up, come back to your intention. What are you offering? Hands to heart center, twist to the right, hooking that left elbow, pressing palm into palm so that this right chest can open a little bit more. Maybe the gaze is at your right elbow. Breathing in, exhale to center, sweep the arms back up. Exhale, hands down to the blocks, tuck the left toes under. This time, just bring that left foot forward to meet the right. Inhale to a half lift. <coughs> Exhale, fold. <coughs> and then press into your feet, begin to lift with a flat back, bringing the arms out to the side. Feel that lengthening of the spine as you lift to stand. Hands to heart center. Tadasana. Take a step back with your right foot. Come up on your toes. Hips are square to the front of the mat. High lunge. Bring your hands to heart center. So we're going to add to that balance here. We're going to add a twist, just like we did with our knee drop down. So find where your hips are facing forward. Draw your hips to the midline. Twist to the left. So it's going to be a little bit more balanced. So you might just stay here. If you want to start to move that right elbow down to the left knee, you can try that. But if not, don't just do what you're comfortable with. You can stay just in the twist. So try and keep the back foot facing forward. Don't turn that. and breathe and then inhale lifting back up turning to center and then bring that right foot in just a little bit have the toes turning on a 45 degree angle and then bring your blocks so that you're at the highest level and then lift back up so bring your hands to your hips lift your chest Begin to hinge. So just like in Uttanasana, where you're lengthening the spine, leading with the heart, 
coming into the fold, this is called pyramid pose. So options, hands come to the highest height of the blocks. They can come to middle. It all depends on where your edge is. And when we say edge, it's an edge that maybe pushes you a little bit, but it doesn't hurt. So Robin straighten that front leg. So the front leg is straight without locking out the knee. And you're hinging and finding that space to surrender over that front leg. Beautiful, everyone. And hips are still square to the front. Press into the feet equally. So you might feel like you're needing to draw that left hip back a little bit. Pyramid pose. And then begin to lift up with a flat back, hands can come to the hips, bend to the left knee, step the right foot forward, and just shake that out side to side. That really works our hip flexors a lot. And then we'll set up for the other side. So find Tadasana, find your grounding, your rooting down, put a little bend in the knee and step that left foot back. So left heel lifted, you're on your left toes and you're pressing into this right foot, spread your toes. Really feel like you're pressing and rooting down through that right foot and that will help with stability as well. So press and lunge, bring the hands to heart center. We're gonna add the twist, so twist to the right. So even just twisting is gonna test your balance a little bit. So stay focused. And then if you want to bring that left elbow down toward the right knee, it's only an option. Breathing in, breathing out, rooting down through that right foot. And then inhale to lift up. Coming to center, hands to the hips, step that left foot in a little bit, straight in both legs. And then lift the chest, begin to hinge. Come to your edge, use your blocks, hands. It can be at the highest height. This side might be a little different as well. So again, go with where you're gonna be most comfortable and where you can Get your full breath in this pose. Check in with your hips and also check in with your feet. Are you pressing equally between the feet? And bring your hands to your hips. Use your core, press into your feet, lift to standing. Bend the right knee, take that left foot forward, shake it out. Beautiful, everyone. So that was a little bit of a balance to work on that crescent lunge. Let's work on another balance in honor of fall. We'll do tree pose. <laughs> I know, so cliche. <laughs> so in tree, so remember that feeling of rooting down in that foot, that front foot. You wanna have that same feeling in your standing leg. And again, every side is different. So. Don't beat yourself up if one side you're feeling more wobbly than the other side. So I'm gonna have my back to you so that you can, I can match the side. <laughs> Find your footing. Start with lifting, just shift your weight to your left foot, lift your right foot. And now turn your right knee out to the side and bring the heel toward the inside of that left foot. So this is the beginning part of tree. You can stay here. This is perfectly acceptable. If you want to just play with lifting the toe off and that, that's your balance. You can bring that to the inside of your calf. You can then bring it to the inside of your thigh as the other option, never on the knee. So either kickstand, calf, or inner thigh. Think about rooting down through that left foot. Think about the right hip opening. If you're feeling stable, 
Maybe the arms come up to grow the branches of your tree. Relax the shoulders. Soften the belly. If you fall out of the pose, come back in. Bring the hands to heart center. Hug that right knee into your chest. Rotate the ankle a few times. One direction and then the other direction. And then just shake out the legs. Come back to feet hip distance apart. Shift your weight into your right foot, lifting the left, and then turning that knee out. So you're opening up the left hip. Bring that heel closer to the leg. Hands to prayer. Staying there or maybe sliding it up to the calf. You want to match what you do on the what you did on the other side. Soften shoulders, tree sway. <laughs> Find a dristy, a point of concentration in front of you. Hands back to prayer. Hug that left knee in, rotate the ankle a few times, and the other time, other way. Nice, everyone. Then come to your mats, tops of your mats. Come to Tadasana, feet about hip distance apart. Inhale, take the arms overhead. And exhale, tilt the tailbone as you hinge. Come into forward fold. We'll be here for five breaths. So giving you the opportunity for an arm bind. So either hands can be on the block. Or maybe hold opposite elbows. Or maybe take the arms behind your back, interlace the fingers, let the arms float overhead. Breathing in, breathing out, and really observing here how the body feels at this part of the practice. So with our balancing in pranayama, with our balancing in our asana work, and then lift up halfway, exhale, bend the knees, plant your hands, step both feet back to plank pose, lower the hips, so you're making a straight line. And then we're going to move to forearm plank. So option to either come right down to the forearms, or if you need to bring your knees down first, you can do that. And then your forearms interlace the fingers and then extend the legs so that your hips are low and you're making that straight line. Your chest should be over the arms. Draw the elbows in if you feel like they're Flaring out, beautiful everyone. So engaging that core strength. We need our core in so many of our yoga poses. If the elbows are past the shoulders, draw them in a little bit. And then lower them down, come to the tops of your feet, lower your knees, your thighs, and then have your Arms come right out in front of you for Sphinx Pose. So have your elbows be under your shoulders. If you need to judge the distance, you can wrap your hands around the elbows to make sure if they're not reaching, that means to bring the shoulders in closer. So wrap the arms around. Yeah, there you go. And now bring the forearms back to the mat. Bring your toes to touch. Press into the tops of your feet. Lengthen. Tuck your pubic bone toward the mat so you feel that lengthening and lifting of the upper body. 
So this mild back bend. It's engaging our glutes, muscles in the back. And it's also opening up the heart space. The gaze is looking just ahead of your fingers. Settle in, find your full breath. Inhale and exhale. One more full inhale and exhale. And begin to lower just a little bit. Bring your left hand on an angle. Bend your right heel towards your glute. Reach back. The right hand comes to the top of your foot, pulling it towards your glute. If you can spiral the hand so that your fingers are pointing away from you and you're pressing down on the top part of your foot. Elbow is bent, half crawl. And slowly release, don't let it spring. <laughs> and then take that right arm on an angle, chest is still lifted, bend the left knee, reach back and either you're grabbing, just wrapping your hand around or if you can Spiral that hand and bend the elbow so that you're pressing the top of your foot toward down and the heel is coming toward the glute. You like this pose, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Slowly release, don't let that left knee spray. And then come all the way down, make a pillow for it with your hands. Elbows come out wide, forehead rests on the backs of the hands. Rock your hips from side to side. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. And then slowly roll onto your back. We're going to set up for bridge pose, grab your block. So in bridge pose, our knees stay in line with our hips. Our heels are coming back toward our sit bones. So first extend your arms straight out. Make sure you can touch your heels with your longest finger. And now take your block and place it in between your thighs. So try and put it in between the thighs versus the knees so that your thighs are pressing into it. So just like this, if you, everybody looks good, yeah. So that's gonna help you keep your knees in line with your hips. Yeah, right there. I know, it's funny how it feels like they're looking straight ahead. All right, so now on an inhale, begin to lift your hips. Press into your feet, have the thighs press into the block. On your exhales, maybe lift the middle of your back. Everybody looks good, everybody's already lifting. <laughs> and then come to get to your edge and breathe. Four more full breaths. So feeling your glutes engaged, your thigh muscles engaged. We wanna work the muscles evenly. So if you feel like you're clenching a muscle more than another one, try and ease off on that. And then exhale, lower down one vertebrae at a time. And then set up for a second one. So on an inhale, lift the hips. And then the pressure should be in the back of the head and also the shoulder blades, but not your neck. So that if you feel any pressure in the neck, 
Make sure you're lifting your chest toward your chin and not your chin toward your chest. The nose stays facing the ceiling. And on an exhale, lower down, remove the block, pull your knees into your chest, give yourself a squeeze. Rock from side to side, massaging out the sacrum. So make sure that low part of your back is making contact with the mat. So if it's, if it's tilting up, you might need to have your knees come away from your chest a little bit. Yeah, you'll feel the difference. So move your knees a little bit away to your sacrum. And now rock from side to side. You feel that massage on that kind of bony part of your low back. That's where you want the release. And now moving into revolved abdomen twist. <clears throat> so in our twists, we wanna protect our low back. So we wanna keep our knees hugged in so that the knees stay in line with the navel. So bring your arms out to a T, let the arms come out and turn your palms to face up so that your shoulders rotate. And now keep your knees drawn in, lower them down to the left. And people are facing different ways. <laughs> so lower them down to the left. They should make an L shape and in line with your navel. So yeah, if you're feeling tightness in your low back, you can place a block in between the thighs or knees. And breathe. So our revolved abdomen twist posture helps to wring out toxins that we store in our intestines, in our stomach, in our whole digestive system. It's a great pose to do before going to bed at night. And then with your core, draw the knees back to center. Take a moment just to find neutral. Keep the knees drawn into the belly and then drop down to the right. Modify with a block as needed. Always it's easy to find a full breath in our twist, but really tune in and breathe from the low belly up to the collarbone and back down. And then draw the knees back to center. Really squeeze them in, lift your forehead up to your knees. Give yourself a good squeeze. And then lower the head back down and take the feet up to the ceiling. So extending the legs. And the arms can come alongside on the mat. Breathing here in what we call legs up the wall or Viparini Karani. Maybe take the legs out wide as if we're doing our forward fold, but in this supine position. Couple breaths there, feeling the hips naturally open. And then bring the soles of the feet together and butterfly the knees out. And maybe your hands can, Oh, you're bringing them all, okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, so keep them up, but you can bring them down, bring them all the way down to the mat so that we 
are in. So then drop your feet to the mat, keeping the knees butterflied out. You can place blocks under each knee for support so that your inner groin muscle can relax. And then slowly, when you're ready, if you want to stay with the legs butterflied out for another few breaths, you can, or begin to extend one leg out at a time. Coming into our final pose, that of Shavasana. And Shavasana might be the most important pose in our yoga practice. It's a time when we give our body's permission to be still, when we allow the practice to sink in. And as you begin to settle in on the note of <clears throat> gratitude and giving this month to share a poem with you called The Starfish. A young man was picking up objects off the beach and tossing them out into the sea. A second man approached him and saw that the objects were starfish. Why in the world are you throwing starfish into the water? If the starfish are still on the beach, when the tide goes out and the sun rises high in the sky, they will die, replied the young man. Well, this is ridiculous. There are thousands of miles of beach and millions of starfish. You can't really believe that what you're doing could possibly make a difference. The young man picked up another starfish, paused thoughtfully and remarked as he tossed it out into the waves. It makes a difference to this one. And that was by Lauren Isley. So maybe recall your intention, your offering that you set. As you inhale, maybe think of inhaling gratitude. And as you exhale, maybe love.
and to deepen your breath. Invite small movements back in, wiggling your fingers and your toes. Circling your wrists and ankles. Maybe take the arms overhead on an inhale and have a nice long stretch feeling the arch in your back. And then drawing the knees into your chest. Rolling onto your right side. Use your right arm as a support for your head. When you're ready, after taking a couple breaths there, press into the left hand to come up to a seat, keeping the eyes closed or at a soft gaze. Crossing the legs, finding Lengthen your spine, rooting down through your sit bones, bringing your hands to heart center. Bow your head softly. Just take a moment to thank yourself. Feel the gratitude for coming onto your mat this morning. And then we'll seal the practice with an ohm, just like we open. So take a full inhale and exhale it all the way out. And then we'll inhale together. The light in me sees and honors the light in each of you. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining us at home. From home. <laughs> Deb, you have a visitor or a guest with you. <laughs> oh, Jerry. Jerry's with me, my husband. <laughs> oh, hold on. Okay, go ahead. I said, Jerry, my husband is with me. Uh, hi, Jerry. Hello. How are you doing? Joining us. Yeah, I thank you for the class. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Good. Hopefully we'll, get, hopefully we'll get down to the gym next time. Yeah. Are you guys coming back soon? Well, we are actually here this week, but then we oh. have to go home and we'll be back in January. Yeah. Late okay. January. All right, okay. good, good. We'll, well we got a then. full class today. Look at how full the studio is. Fantastic. Yeah. 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 Wonderful. Yeah. Hi guys. Oh. Hi. Hi, Debbie. <laughs> All Thank right. You. Jackie, Heather, nice to see you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.